Welcome to the Lesbian Review Podcast. I'm Sheena and I'm joined today by the fabulous Erin. Erin is a fellow reviewer at the Lesbian Review website and she specializes in thrillers. So I've got her on the show today to talk about three thrillers to thrill you. Yay. <laughs> so she promises <laughs> she promises me these are three of the best thrillers to get you very excited while you're reading. This is true. This is true. I do promise that. What what is so thrilling about these three? Uh, do they have anything in common, or is it just that like the story is so awesome? Um, okay, well they do. I guess they do have a little bit in common because they all feature like a police procedural type vibe to them. That being said, uh, to me, they're just really great characters first and foremost, and beyond that, I think the like they're all part of a series. So each one is part of a series, and I think um, in the thriller world in particular, those books that are parts of series tend to be the ones that I'm drawn to the most, um, and it's only a really exceptional standalone thriller that I would rave and rave and rave and rave about, um, because I feel like you get invested, um, and then it ends. <laughs> and so okay. yeah so that they're all part of a, a a series in one way shape or form and so that yeah okay um the series novels are definitely a, a plus for a lot of people for that exact reason they like to keep following the protagonists through their many many trials i'm very much a one read kind of girl if i've read the story i'm done granted but you will die trying to get Lee Winter to write more Requiem books. So... Oh, well, this is a fair point. This is a very fair point. <laughs> so, you know, standalones maybe aren't your thing so much. All right, so I stand corrected then. Okay, so what is your first pick? All right, well, the first one is Four Point by Max Allendale. Four Point is the first of the trilogy that Max wrote about her characters, and I really... I like I just immediately liked the lead character and so absolutely you should read the first one and then build from it. Normally I don't really care so much about the order, but I think you learn so much about Sally, who is the lead character. You learn so much about her and what makes her tick and what drives her. She is seriously messed up. And I love that about her. Like, she, Sally is, I don't think it's giving anything away to say that she is, she's been involved with a, a serial killer and she's one of the surviving victims. And you find that out quite early on in the story, so it's not really a spoiler. Because of that, she's seriously like just a tortured, tortured kind of soul. And that's so appealing to me because it's so difficult to write. And I think Ellen Dale nailed it. It's, it's a really, really great book and something that kept me guessing, which I read a lot of thrillers, so sadly, a lot of the time, I can kind of roughly guess what's coming. But with this one, I really struggled. And as soon as I finished it, I think I emailed you and was like, look, I need the second book. Um, because <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I just couldn't stop thinking about the characters and where they were going and what was going to happen next, which, you know, is the joy of a series. Like, there is some violence, there is some pretty awful things that happen to some women in the book, and, you know, nothing that's really graphic, but if you have an imagination, it will take you places you might not like, if that's not your thing. But it is exceptional writing, and the characters, there are very few people that can write really tortured characters, but I, I think she really nailed it, and I, I really highly recommend the book. So what's it about? So pretty much, it's the first book in the trilogy. Detective Sally James, her real name's Salinger, she is hunting for an, a serial killer who has been active in the past and then disappeared and then came back. And Sally was one of the victims who survived. There's two victims who survived. It's kind of based a few years after that. And there's quite a lot of reference to how awful her life has been. And, and she still meets with the other survivor that she knows. And, and so it, there's kind of that background stuff going on. And then all of a sudden in walks this detective, Detective Maggie Miller, who is a cold case detective and has been 
given the four point serial killer to hunt down, but didn't realize that Sally was the surviving victim until after she'd tried to convince Sally to help her find the killer. It's quite an interesting dynamic between the two of them. The one thing that probably lets the book down from my perspective is that there's like a romance thing kind of lingering in behind it. And I'm not the person that needs romance in a thriller, but it doesn't hurt the book, especially it's just, you know, it's there. And yeah, I guess, you know, it's about Sally kind of letting someone in for the first time since this awful thing happened and and how that looks for her and and Sally is just like she's one of my favorite literary characters that I've read she's badass but she has a good reason for it you know the book sounds brilliant and I love that as a little twist you know that she's actually the the surviving victim so it's got a very personal stake for her all three books that I'm recommending you today also have that in common that there's this real like personal thing that happens for the lead characters that draws you into it so if anyone's looking to recommend me a thriller that is gonna be gold every time that is gonna get gonna get me interested and get me invested so i can see you ticking there (laughs) thinking what can i what can i recommend (laughs) (laughs) do i do i not recommend enough books to you erin oh more than i will ever read in my lifetime probably (laughs) i'm a pusher i can't help myself yeah look it's okay it's okay i'm a taker we'll take we'll take works it works okay so the next your second choice okay well my second choice is indiscretions by barbara winks it is the first of her series about harding and carpenter it is a very recent read for me but one that really got me and i i really struggled for a long time to put my finger on what it was that actually got me about it the characters were really engaging from the start. I mean, there's things in it that I don't normally like reading. And so it was kind of a revelation for me, but it literally had me on the edge of my seat. Like I was really invested in the story and I, I couldn't stop reading it because I had to know what was happening. And yeah, like the adrenaline was rushing and I was like, whoa, this is a really, really good read. So absolutely one that I think people should give a chance It's relatively unknown, I think. Like, Barbara's an an indie author and has just re-released the series. Um, And so I don't think there's a whole lot of marketing and stuff out there. And she doesn't have this big publisher behind her going, hey, look at this book. And honestly, if you looked at the book on a shelf, you'd probably look past it and go, oh, that one there looks more interesting. But look inside it and you will not be disappointed. You're talking about the cover, because the cover's not great. Let's just be straight up about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, the cover is, it's it's simple and it's not entirely enticing, but, you know. It doesn't tell you anything about the story or the genre or, or what it's sort of representing. So no, it it's really a difficult doesn't. cover to, to want to engage with. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't grab you. It doesn't reach out and say, hey, you must have this book in your hands, but get past that with this book absolutely get past that because once you're reading the book you will um very quickly see that actually the 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 cover is just not at the least representative of the writing and the characters like it's it's really it's a really strong start to a series i think okay it's about ellie harding who is a police officer she's you know kind of a youngish police officer she really wants to be a detective and she's out in the town one night with some friends after work and decides to walk home and she's attacked by someone that basically leaves her for dead in the alley and so she kind of has this like revelation that actually she just has to take from life what she wants and then along comes detective Jordan Carpenter who is engrossed in a serial killer case and is in a long-term relationship with someone, but the long-term relationship is long-term over, like it has been for a while and it just kind of keeps meandering along. And before Ellie was attacked, Jordan had actually sort of caught Ellie's eye and there was kind of, there was an indication that they'd sort of had a, a bit of flirting and that sort of thing go on um, across the room, you know, eyes meet, etc. To be honest with you, when I first started reading it, I was like, Oh, I really don't like where this is going because I, ha- I like I just can't do cheating as a storyline. It just bothers me so much. 
for so many reasons. And I'm really, really glad that I was like, actually, no, I'm going to give it a chance. And I actually found myself rooting for them towards the end. I was like, please, can you get together? Like, you guys are perfect for each other. So they kind of go about trying to catch this killer who seems to be tied into the attack on Ellie. And it's just a really rambly synopsis from me. But it's a really interesting book. And it it was one that I really couldn't see what was going to happen. I love a book that I'm just like left guessing. And then I'm like, whoa, what? Um And that's exactly what happened with this one. (laughs) I was like, whoa, what just happened here? Again, really, really complex characters. You know, they're a bit, like Ellie's obviously a little bit tortured after her attack and Jordan's really complex. And it's obvious that Winx has written this as the start of a series because you only really scratch the surface with Jordan, but you know that there's a whole pile more behind it. And you get kind of introduced to little bits that you know are going to be expanded. Um, and so it's kind of a really a really great start to a series because it, it really makes you want to get the next book and see what happens between these two people and for each of them as individuals as well. Okay, so so far, both your, your picks have had two things in common. There's, there's a, the chase for a serial killer and there's something about the book that you thought you would hate because you generally hate that, but then the, the author persuaded you differently. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm recommending them. If I saw the synopsis and didn't give them a crack, I would be missing out. And like often when people recommend something, they're like, oh, well, it's about this or it's about that. And if they'd mentioned like a cheating storyline, for example, I would have not read the book. I would have just been like, yeah, no, actually not going to read it. Doesn't really float my boat. And so these two books, they really just jump out as examples of why sometimes you should challenge yourself to be different than what you expect to be. And I, yeah, I, I really can't speak highly enough of how well that part of the story is written to overcome my own personal feelings on it. That for me is definitely the mark of an excellent author because there are things that I just am not a fan of. Like, I'm not a huge fan of age gap romances generally. But then Kerry Michelle Telford comes along and writes stuff that it's like, you know, a 16 year old or a 17 year old getting together with like a 30 year old. And it's something I would never, ever, ever, ever read. But because she wrote it, it's so captivating, I can't help. Well, this is the thing, right? Great authors can change the world. Absolutely. Um, And even if they only change it for one person, it's still a world changed. And anyone that's listening to this that thinks, oh, no, these books aren't really for me, I would absolutely challenge you to read the first 15 to 20% and then tell me that it's still not for you. Because I, I really think that these women that are writing these stories about these women, they're so exceptional at crafting a story that makes you feel things and think things that you didn't necessarily believe were possible or likely so you know to me to me that's absolutely the hallmark of a great book and a great author and there's two right there absolutely all right so what is your third one my third one is the last first time by um andrea now i say it bramall you say it bramhall she probably says it completely different again i'm sorry andrea um but you know i'm just going to call it andrea because we're mates right (laughs) Um, <laughs> we're not at all we're not at all I be, I like I don't think she even knows who I am but that's not the point um this book is outstanding um and you know it's a, a lambda award um nominee this year and like without doubt it has my vote as the book of the year for me last year like it was just it's just so well written It's just, it's one of those books, like it still sticks with me and I still think about it months after I read it. Um, And that's, you know, like I read a lot of books, not as many as I'd like or as many as you recommend, but (laughs) I read a lot. (laughs) Um, And it's, it's really rare that a book comes back to me at random points and I'm like, gosh, I really wish I could read that book for the first time again. Um, And that is how I feel about this book. So it's the third book in her Norfolk Coast investigation series. And I saw today that she's got another one coming out in that series at the end of the year. And I'm like, 
please write faster, Andrea, and forget all those campers over summer. Just get it done. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you have she, been cyber stalking like, her. I haven't been cyber stalking her. She's just really active. Mm-hmm. Um, and I follow. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So that's stalking, but that's not the point. Um, <laughs> she writes. Uh, so the Norfolk Inv- um, Coast Investigation Series is about um, Detective Sergeant Kate Brennan, who um, is this really cool. Like, she's like someone that you'd want to be friends with. It's kind of hard to explain, but like one of those people that you'd be like, yes, I want to be your friend. I'm a little bit afraid of you and a little bit attracted to you. And I'm not sure how to fit that all into one package. Like she's really, she's really smart. She's really like, she's loyal without fault. You can read this book as a standalone. Um, You can really read all of her books as standalones. In my opinion, obviously there is a storyline that flows through all of them. That's why it's called a series. So Kate uh, has a girlfriend called Gina and without spoiling the previous books, which you should also read, Gina has some issues, and so they haven't actually done the deed just yet. Did they get together in book one? Uh, yeah, pretty much. They started sort of... So they got together in book one, and we're in book three, and they still haven't... Yeah, yeah, sealed the deal. And that is why Andrea Bremel is such a great author, because she keeps people interested, even without giving them the dirty stuff. fantastic yeah yeah so you didn't see a lot of Gina in the second book to be honest she was sort of really quite a side character but in this particular book Gina really comes to the fore so basically what happens right at the start is that Gina decides that she wants to seduce Kate and so she's going to go along and get um, some fancy lingerie to help her with that so she takes Stella which is one of Kate's colleagues and good friends and so Stella and Gina go off to some little um now it's a UK name and something maybe and Summers does that sound right I have no idea oh it's okay it's a lingerie shop it's a lingerie store okay it's a lingerie store um (laughs) I I feel like it's called and Summers but I could be wrong but anyway a couple of terrorists come in and blow the shop up while Gina is in there does Gina die? Oh my god. Gina does not die. Oh good. Gina does not die. Um but enough. you know, after all the crap that she's been through to try and blow her up as well, like Bremel's really got it in for this chick. So Gina doesn't die, but she spends the last few moments of an elderly woman's life holding her and supporting her. It really affects Gina a lot and then Kate finds out that Gina's involved and so everything you know, turns to custard on in her personal life because she's worried so much about the impact of that. But Kate is also one of the detectives that are pulled into the investigation. It's kind of a really nice story where they sort of work their way through a, a really murky, messy, dark kind of place to a place where suddenly they see the light and they're happy and, and everything works out okay between the two of them. It's really really raw and I think like it's obviously set in in the UK and to read a book about young Muslim women blowing themselves up as an act of terror and the subsequent investigation that the police have to go through and the impact that it has on survivors and stuff like that was just it was so well written like there were times when I cried there were times when I laughed There were times when I cried some more and then I sobbed and then I cried again. Like it was just, it was really, really hard hitting writing. You know, I've always really admired how Andrea writes her thrillers, but this particular book, like I can see why she's been nominated for for the Lammy because I think it's just exceptional writing and about something that I think a lot of people still shy away from. You know, she's real about it and she's like, no, I'm writing about things that happen now to real people and I love that and she writes about a nine-year-old girl which is Gina's daughter who just I love her so much and if I had a daughter which I don't I have two sons but if I had a daughter I would want her to be Sammy because she is so cool she's like this little million miles an hour tomboy gonna get in your face and she's just great just a really great character and it's really rare to see a child character get so much space in a Les Fick 
novel, but the way that she's written is just delicious and she's, she's so much fun. And, um, I really admire the fact that in a book about such dark things that there is this little bouncy light that floats through the book, um, called Sammy. She's cool. I think you're right. I don't think kids get a lot of screen time, if you like. I don't think they get the depth that they deserve. Um, so often people will write a child into the story or there'll be a child that's kind of like a pivotal part of the story, but they're not actually a, a character in their own right. Yes. And I think that's such a shame because there are so many important things that children can teach us about life and love and all those sorts of things. And like my challenge to, to authors would be write these children write these children who like you see fantastic authors like the one that immediately jumps to mind is someone like uh say Rachel Rachel Spangler or um Claire Lydon who both are quite active on social media and often refer to what their children have been doing and they tell funny stories Kiki Archer classic and you know but you don't you don't see that flow through into their writing as much and I'm like why not these children are just they're captivating and, you know, for so many lesbic readers, children are an integral part of their lives. You know, for me personally, and I know for some of the other reviewers, our children are our most important characters in our in our real life. And so I, I really want to see more of that. I prefer they probably didn't come into the thrillers so much because, you know, that can be kind of awful. Except that, that what you just mentioned was that she's a nice kind of uh, bright light in this dark space yeah. right so it's a really cool yeah storytelling element you know yeah yeah absolutely um if it's done right i think it's fantastic and you know i think there needs to be more focus on bringing you know there's there's the ways really great um peripheral characters from different authors about you know in different ways but um and i know you personally like you are always keen on a good furry friend in a book um you know I've heard you talk about you know your your favorite dog characters (laughs) and stuff like that and I I just think you know we write we write dogs but we don't write children like what what's going on here we need to write more of both it also normalizes the whole idea of two women having a family and being a family unit you know which I think is also important absolutely I don't think that there's anything wrong with being a lesbian couple with children well I'm I'm Please, you think that way, <laughs> being that I am one of those. <laughs> well, the thing is, I think it's important to have parents that care about you, and I don't think it matters what that looks like as a picture. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like I say, I think a, a really well-written child character will add to the story in a way that no adult character could. Yes. Um, because there is there is such a, a truth and innocence and such power from what they can what they can say and do that adults yes. don't because they they're also learning about their world and they're exploring and there's an innocence and a naivety that we've lost along the way as we grow up you know so you can bring an yeah. entire dynamic in with kids yeah so um yeah i guess I'd, I'd like to see more of that but in this particular book it's done really really well and in amongst all of the awfulness that is there that made me sad and happy and sad again there is a really great storyline featuring Sammy, um, but also featuring Kate and Gina and this really big storyline that they're going through. So it's a highly, highly recommended book. I recommend the whole series, in fact. Um, and I'll be honest, I've not read any of her romance novels. I know other reviewers are big fans. I can't bring myself to do it because I would compare them to her thrillers and I don't think that that's fair. If, if you've read any of her romances and you like the way that she writes, absolutely pick up one of these books because you will not regret it. You know, lesbic is an interesting sector because we, I think, are, are pickier than, than most sectors when it comes to darker books. Okay, so we want the happy endings, we want the romance, we want the happy sex, we want the whatever it is, you know. Mm-hmm. So thrillers are not getting the credits I think that they deserve. I want thrillers to be thrillers. I want them to be dark. I want them mm. to be to be angsty. I want the characters to go through hell because that's the point of a thriller. <laughs> Absolutely. And we don't have enough of those. 
Um, we have an awful lot, as you can tell by the three that I've recommended, there's an awful lot of police procedurals. And some of them are fantastic and well worth having on any shelf, mainstream or otherwise. But there are definitely some challenges uh, in the way that some of the books are presented. And I think we need more psychological thrillers. Yes. Um, we need more... We need more thrillers that really challenge you to step outside of what you expect and yes. look for. It's really a bit naff to go, oh, well, you know, I want to see a book that's like The Da Vinci Code or something like that, you know, like that real sort of intricate, puzzly mystery thing. But I would love to read a Les Fick novel that had the element of working it like working through a, a puzzle and and never really being 100 percent sure of where you're going to next um without necessarily having all the violence and the you know the po the police uniforms or the you know going back to the station and that kind of stuff like i don't necessarily need that in a book i just want excitement and um something that really challenges my mind. You know, I'll be straight up with you. Sometimes I really want a dark read. I want that read about that stalker who is going to, you know, kidnap this woman if she doesn't, you know, do something to stop that. I want the story mm -hmm. about the the woman who wakes up in a basement and doesn't know what the hell happened and it turns out she's been killed like kidnapped by a serial killer, but she nobody knows where she is and she has to get out. I want those stories mm -hmm. sometimes, and they're so difficult to find in Lesvik. If you want those stories, read Indiscretions by Barbara Wanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, because there are elements of what you just said in that book. You know, like the book could be darker, and there could be less like of a romance-y kind of feel to it. That's part of the reason that I was so invested in that book, is because it was really um, different in that respect. Like there was this real dark sort of side to it, and it, I genuinely didn't believe or I, I didn't know whether or not the characters were going to survive until the end. But that's great. You know, that's what I want. Yes. That's what I want is to not know. Um, and that's that's hard when you know that something's part of a series or you know that, you know, there's something future coming or whatever. But um, that those books where you genuinely don't know whether your favorite character is going to live or die and you are on the edge of your seat waiting to find out. That is what I want to read time and time again. I agree with you. And I, I feel bad for them. Like, you don't want them to be tortured. But at the same time, you kind of do because it's really fun to watch. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm never coming to your house for dinner. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like, it, it, it is one of those, it's kind of like those car accidents that you drive past. And, you know, people talk about, I'm going to drive past and, and I don't want to look, but I can't take my eyes off it kind of that type of thing where you don't want to but you have to keep reading there's definitely that to it but it's also a case of if i were in this situation how would i solve this problem right absolutely and so you want to see i mean it's just the, it's it's the strangest thing but but that's what i do i'm like if i was in this situation how would i fix this problem what would i do next right and then when the yeah. character does something that you think is stupid, it's great fun to yell at the character and say, you know, if you're really stupid, you need to be doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. Or have you not worked out yet that this person is going to come from behind that door <laughs> and get you? Exactly. And why haven't you worked that out yet? Exactly. Perhaps you're not as smart as I thought you were. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. When in fact, what it really is, is it's the author that's smarter than all of us because she's leading us down that road. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And there are there are a whole bunch of books that have elements of that. And, you know, there's there's a few that you could reel off right now, I'm sure. But um, I want more of them. I want more books that really... I want books that I can recommend to my friends, to my straight friends who are married with children, who are like, hey, I know you read Lesvik. I'm okay with Lesvik, but it has to be a good book. I want those books on my Kindle tomorrow, please. Like, I want to be able to say to them, this is a book you cannot miss. I don't care that it's lesbic. You won't care that it's lesbic. It is damn good writing. Exactly. What more could we want? <sighs> because just easy. Come on, authors. Easy. Entertain yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You know, like, there must be four or five just writing, writing those right now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 
All right, so without more spoilers, because I think we may have given a little bit away about some of the stuff, but it's all good. <laughs> you won't be disappointed anyway. Okay, so these are three fantastic thrillers that, that you must go pick up today, and the links are in the show notes, and I'll also link to Erin's fantastic reviews of them. All right, so come and join our Facebook group, the Lesbian Review Book Club. Yay. And Erin, on Thursdays, recommends thrillers. It's Thriller Thursday on the group. So most Thursdays, she actually remembers to do that. So you will get a lot of fantastic thriller recommendations. Erin is our primary thriller reviewer on the site, and she's cracking the sector wide open and only recommending the books that she absolutely loves. This is true. That's all for this week. I'm Sheena. This was Erin. Thanks for joining me, Erin. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'll have you any day. <laughs> oh, stop it. I'm married and so are you. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> oh, dear. Talk about thrillers. <clears throat> <laughs>